DevOps is a collaborative approach just taken up by most companies these days. It focuses on scaling up and making the entire process of scaling up much smoother. So no doubt companies are actively looking out for DevOps engineers. Welcome to another tutorial with Simply Learn. I'm Lance, and today we'll be looking at how you can become a DevOps engineer. So let's begin. So by definition, DevOps is a collaboration between the development and the operations team, which enables continuous delivery of application and services to the end users. So let's expand on this definition. First, the development team is the one that actually produces the products. The operations team is related with the management or the maintenance of these products. Now, there's a link that DevOps forms between these two teams, which makes this entire process much smoother. And this approach, this collaborative approach, is what's called DevOps. So DevOps focuses on continuous delivery of application, which means that when the development team is ready with the product, it immediately goes into the maintenance or the management phase, and it's then pushed on to the end users with minimum delay. Now, just in case you doubt the stand of DevOps today or its growth in the near future, you must know that according to the Information Week, DevOps will be in high demand for upcoming years and has no chance of slowing down. Also, according to LinkedIn, over the past few years, DevOps has increased in demand by 50%. Now, that's quite a lot of growth, so clearly DevOps is a field that will be great to dive into and grow in. So before we begin how you can actually become a DevOps engineer, let's look at what we'll be going through in this video. First, we look at who is a DevOps engineer, followed by the DevOps career roadmap. We'll then look into a DevOps certification, and then finally the salary trends for a DevOps engineer. So who is a DevOps engineer? Now a DevOps engineer is an IT professional who understands the software development lifecycle. And when I say software development lifecycle, I did not just mean the DevOps approach, but right from a waterfall model, which is a traditional software development lifecycle. And then as you know, we moved on to the agile and then we finally reached the DevOps lifecycle. So a DevOps engineer needs to understand the whole purpose of this lifecycle, why we had to move from one model to the other, what are the shortcomings that the previous models had? And what all does DevOps make up for? Also, other than understanding this entire process, they also need to know how to use the various automation tools for developing the continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines. So of course, your next question must be, what is the continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline? Well, as you can see on your right, we have an image of this pipeline. So there are various stages. So first you have your planning stage where you plan things out and write an algorithm for your product. Then it's the building stage where the algorithm actually transforms into a code and is a product which could be used. Then you have the testing stage. In the testing stage, your product is tested, all the bugs are caught, and all of this is corrected. And once all of that's done, it's then sent to the deployment stage, which means now your product is ready to be deployed. Once it's deployed, of course, a product needs continuous monitoring. And this is now something new, which has been introduced into the DevOps lifecycle, that although your product is out in D now, the monitoring stage is something that the DevOps approach focuses on much more than our previous models, and for very good reason, which is that once your product is deployed into the real world, to ensure customer satisfaction, it's important that you continuously monitor the product. This way you're able to catch the bugs, fix them, and push it back to the clients and ensure that they are happy with your product and would go for it again. Now, in simple words, a DevOps engineer is expected to collaborate with the developers and the operations team to deliver high quality products within a minimum amount of time. Now, DevOps engineer as such is not a profile that you might come across very often. But of course, there are a number of career paths that you can undertake under the DevOps engineer. But of course, there are a number of career paths under a DevOps engineer. Now, some of these are the DevOps architect, automation engineer, software tester, integration specialist, security engineer, and release manager. Now let's look at the DevOps career roadmap. So basically, if you are looking forward to bagging that DevOps engineer job, where should you start and how should you go about it? Well, first things first, there are a few programming languages which go hand in hand with the DevOps tools. You need to pick up these and also know the Linux fundamentals. DevOps uses these programming languages for developing and automating software. Now, the three most common languages used with the DevOps tools are Ruby, Python, and JavaScript. 
It is always advised that you know at least one of these. And of course, we must consider the fact that these three languages are used with completely different tools. So knowing just one of these languages does not mean that you can now work with any tool under the DevOps approach, but it does give you a good hang of at least one of them, which is more than most can say. It's also important to know the fundamentals of the Linux command line interface. Of course, this is not very unique to DevOps. In whichever career path you are choosing, Linux fundamentals is one of the most important things. Now, let's discuss some of the mandatory Linux skills that a DevOps engineer should be aware of. First is, of course, the Linux shell. Now, you must either know Bash or the kernel shell. Then it's the Linux commands. Now, there are a huge number of Linux commands, but the basic ones you must know, no matter what, are the find, grep, awk, and the set command. And finally, we have the networking commands, nslookup, which is for querying the DNS, and netstat for monitoring your connections. Our next milestone would be learning the source code management. Now, source code management is especially important when you're dealing with huge projects so that all your code, irrespective of the number of files you have or the number of versions of a particular code you have, everything is organized and can be easily accessible. So it's important that you're comfortable with at least one of the source code management tools here. The most common ones we see are Git, CVS, and Mercurial. I would personally recommend you to choose Git. And why Git? Because Git is used to track changes in the source code. It can manage large projects efficiently, and it allows multiple developers to work together with great ease. Now, our next stage is to learn to build applications. So a DevOps engineer must know how to build an application and commit to the source code management tools such as Git. Now, a popular tool used to build applications, which makes things much simpler, is Maven. Why Maven? Well, it supports parallel builds, instant access to new features without any additional configuration, and has an easy build process. Now, Maven is actually an automation tool which helps to build and manage software projects within a short period of time. So here you have the bomb file, which is required to build an application under which you have a set of jars. You have the commands which are to be executed, the builds plugins, and the builds profile. But in order to automate the entire process, you require a continuous integration or a continuous development tool. And this brings us to our fourth stage, which is learning to automate the process using CI and CD tools. One of the most extensively used tools in this field is Jenkins. Jenkins is an open source continuous integration tool. It helps to automate continuous development testing and deployment of newly created codes. Well, why Jenkins? Well, because it has multiple plugins, it is easily distributed across multiple machines, and has an easy installation and configuration process. Our next stage is to learn to test the applications. Once you have completed the build process, learn how to automate the testing process of web applications. One of the best testing tools for QA teams is Selenium. And why Selenium above all the other tools that provide the same functionality? Well, because it provides fast execution, allows scripting in several languages, and also supports parallel test execution. The next thing is to learn to deploy applications in production servers. So you should learn how to deploy and run the applications in the production servers. And in order to deploy an application, you should have the knowledge of containers, such as Docker and configuration management tools like Ansible. So Docker helps with the containerization, while configuration management tools such as Ansible helps provide you the capability of pushing configurations onto multiple servers and maintaining them in the required state. So why choose Docker? Well, high scalability and efficiency, reusable data volumes, isolated applications. And why Ansible? Because unlike other tools in this field, it has a push-based configuration. It is agentless and uses SSH for secure connections. The next stage is to learn to monitor the applications. So monitoring your applications is another important aspect of a DevOps engineer. In this stage, we identify the issue and implement the changes as quickly as possible. The most popular tool which provides for monitoring applications is Nagios. It has a comprehensive monitoring system, high availability, and immediate remediation. And finally, a DevOps engineer must know the working of cloud providers. For a DevOps engineer, it's important to know about the cloud service providers and their basics. Cloud computing is an important skill to learn, irrespective of which field you're in today. As a lot of companies have the infrastructure on the cloud, Amazon Web Services is the most popular cloud provider, whereas Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform are slowly catching up to Amazon. Amazon Web Services provides high scalability and flexibility 
is cost-effective, and provides better security. Let's now look at some of the DevOps certifications you can opt for. The first one is the AWS Certified DevOps Engineer Program, which is offered by Amazon Web Services. And then, of course, we have the DevOps certification training offered by our very own Simply Learn. Simply Learn also provides programs which are more specific to tools such as Chef, Puppet, Ansible, and Selenium certification. And we also provide a DevOps Architect Master's program. So now these are some of the most popular certifications available in the market. If you're taking up a career, you must know what kind of salary to expect. An average salary of a DevOps engineer in the United States is $115,666 per year. So this is the average salary. As you can see here, guys, there's a graph which shows how there's been a growth. And this graph here will give you a good idea of the salary trend. An average salary of a DevOps engineer in India, on the other hand, is 6,12,000 per year. So again, here we have a graph on the right, which demonstrates the pattern in growth in the salary. Now, here's some additional material to prepare yourself and help you in the journey to becoming a DevOps engineer. So this is Simply Learn's YouTube playlist on DevOps. As you can see here are a number of videos you can start off with. This fun short video on what is DevOps. It introduces DevOps to you in the most basic and fun way possible. And then you have DevOps tutorial for beginners. What is DevOps? Another tutorial introduction to DevOps. And then you can follow this up with the tutorials on the various tools under DevOps. For example, there's Git, there's Jenkins, Docker, Docker Swarm, Ansible Chef, Puppet, a comparison between the various configuration management tools. And there are also DevOps interview questions, part one and part two, which will help you prepare for your interviews. Now, why DevOps is better than Agile or if it's the other way around? Watch this video to find out how to create your resume for the post of a DevOps engineer and so on. So there are a lot of videos here, guys. You can definitely go through them and it provides you with a lot of information. Not only that before you actually take up the Simply Learn course to get a better understanding of the kind of content and the quality of content that they offer, you can come back here and check out their free courses or their free tutorial videos. And with that, we come to an end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope it was really helpful for all those who are aspiring to become a DevOps engineer. Please hit the like button if so. Also share our video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet, because we have a lot more coming up for you. So thank you all and see you all next time. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.